praise be Jesus and Mary. Without docility and obedience to God and his ways, the wisest of men can do the most foolish of things. And this is precisely what we see in the first reading. Solomon, we've been hearing about him throughout the week, the glorious reign of Solomon. He built the temple. He placed the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. He worshiped God in the temple, and his wisdom was praised by the Queen of Sheba. And today we hear how he builds temples and he worships again. But this time, he builds and worships idols. Without docility and obedience to the ways of God, the wisest of men can do the most foolish of things. We read in sacred scripture that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And we can say that the fear of men, that is the absence of the fear of God, is the beginning of foolishness. So how did this happen to Solomon? The sacred writer goes to the heart of the problem when he says, when Solomon was old, his wives had turned his heart to strange gods, and his heart was not entirely with the Lord. Heart in biblical language means the vital center of the person, and it represents and signifies and reflects the state of mind of the person and the moral condition of the person. Hence, it is important to be vigilant and to guard our hearts so as not to fall into spiritual dullness. Spiritual dullness, which means the lack of sense of the things of God. In fact, the gift of wisdom, when the Holy Spirit moves his gift, the gift of wisdom, we experience what St. Thomas calls a savory knowledge, we actually taste the things of God. And here we see spiritual dullness. And that's why it's important to stay vigilant, remain vigilant, and guard our hearts. Not only because of this, but also because, as Blessed John Henry Newman says, cor ad cor loquitur. Heart speaks unto heart, and God speaks there. There he impresses inspirations, his graces, and there it's important to guard. That's why it's important to guard our hearts. St. John in his gospel says, Christ knew what was in the hearts of men. He knows what's in the hearts of men, and he also knows how to cleanse and purify those hearts. Also, St. Louis de Montfort, in true devotion to Mary, says that Our Lady, when presented with something, is capable of embellishing it, whatever it may be, however poor it may be, and present it in a more beautiful form to Christ. So let us turn to Our Lady and offer her our poor hearts. She can embellish anything. And if we give our poor hearts to her, she can give them and she can give it to Christ in a more beautiful way. Praise be Jesus and Mary.